Good afternoon. As the interim political leader of the National Transformation Alliance, we would like to bring something to the attention of Trinidad and Tobago. We have seen over the last few days concerns pertaining to reports and findings of committees that we have, would have been over decade, a few decades ago. We would like to clarify that the Trinidad and Tobago, we are going about this in the wrong manner. Both the PNM and the UNC administrations, whenever there is a, a, a situation of a national concern, what they do is to appoint committees, they appoint audit teams, they have commissions of inquiries, and we have seen it from the Scott Drug report, from the Robert Sabger report, um, the Stanley John report, the Barrington report, the Judith Jones report, um, the commission of inquiry with Ramesh Maraj uh, leading of the unfortunate situation with the divers, and we have all of these committees. Unfortunately, nothing comes about of it, and even it may be the right intention, these committees can only be of value to deal with policy and to find flaws in the policies to, for it to be improved. As it pertains to persons involved in criminal activities, you cannot be using individuals who have no training, no uh, knowledge in law enforcement, no intelligence gathering capability, and we use these individuals. And unfortunately, what happens is that these committees would comprise at the end reports with hundreds of pages, and with these pages, it will involve many persons with reports of it is alleged, it is perceived, and we have heard. These things cannot be used used as an avenue for the police to launch an investigation and to pinpoint perpetrators. In fact, it does just the opposite because at times these reports can be leaked to certain individuals, inclusive of even police officers who may be involved, and it gives the perpetrators a head start to cover their tracks. This is not how it is dealt with, and we have seen this for far too long. So when it is we have all of these reports, it is rumored, it is alleged, we have heard, this cannot in any way solve the problem. So when the country continues to ascertain as to why it is that all of these reports we have with all of these allegations, no one is apprehended, it's because we are going about it the wrong way. The, how it is done in most countries, you have a separate body, an investigative unit, persons properly polygraphed, separate and apart from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Patrick Manning understood that, which is why he formed the Special Anti-Crime Unit, sought. Unfortunately, it was shut down and there was not a constitutional change to give them that authority. It is similar to the FBI. You cannot have systems now where you have civilians continue to be appointed and then they do not have the capability in law enforcement, in intelligence gathering, because what they will do is just simply get information from persons and the information will be littered with it is alleged, it is heard, and we have it is rumored. That cannot be used as an avenue. In fact, one person who referred to herself as a journalist had the audacity to try to even question myself as Commissioner of Police by stating she submitted information to me. That is untrue. At no time did she submit anything of relevance in any form or fashion, no leads, no evidence, no witnesses, nothing to assist the police in the investigation. Police cannot work on hearsay and rumors. And unfortunately, we have seen for far too long we have been going about this in the wrong direction. As the Commissioner of Police, then, uh, previously, I understood the importance of, of these matters with crime to not just with children, to elderly, to women, and those persons who may be deemed as vulnerable, which is why we formed the Gender-Based Violence Unit, and the units we had, uh, apart from that, we had situations with the online reporting, the app reporting, the 4A2 Gary, all of these things have been discarded. It is unfortunate that after all of these things, the acting commissioner of police now decides to form a special team to deal with sexual offenses, when at this time last year this was drafted and we were on track to have the sexual offenses unit and it was also shut down along with dozens of other things that we implemented then. So going back to my concern, what, I, what needs to be done is not to continue to have all of these committees and all of the hearsay. It has gone for far too long. We have heard a uh, uh, previous finance minister boasting that our previous prime minister told her about the names of these drug lords. We've heard a, a, a present minister of national security boasting about someone trying to bribe him. Without, with all of this type of rum shop talk, it cannot lead to solving the problem. The NTA, what we want is to find solutions, and the solutions cannot be based on continuing to appoint committees that will just cost the taxpayers millions of dollars and nothing comes of, uh, of it. In fact, as I said, it actually protects the criminals. It gives them a head start to cover their tracks. What is required is a special elite investigative team separate and apart from the police service that have that investigative capacity and the training that 
that even if police officers are involved in such a national crime and are, the, and are concerned, even those police officers can be targeted and be possible suspects. That is how you deal with the problem. The NT will continue to find solutions and not find ways to just continue to talk and to attack political opponents. This is how we solve the problem with this situation right now in Trinidad and Tobago.